What up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com. Dawson's Fish Tanks bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So last week, I got a little woo-woo with you talking about the Back to Nature video and how we need to get back to nature. Thanks for the love on that video. I had a good time making that and getting that off my chest. Today, I want to show you guys my new slice of nature here in the backyard. Got a bunch of nice garden pond, koi pond tips for you today. But it's Sunday. It's Species Sunday. I've got all kinds of plants in here to show you as well. But first, I want to start and I want to take a step back and kind of talk about some of the things that have gone right in this garden pond. Um, the first thing is everyone is very critical about it being a, a rocked-in pond. Uh, I love the fact that it's rocked in. I think it looks fabulous. And also, the beneficial bacteria growing on this rock is doing us some good. I know a lot of like pure koi keepers would prefer to have an uh, entirely lined uh, bottom or just like a black liner bottom. Not the case here. I like the way it looks rocked. And when I do the next addition down here, I'm going to rock it in as well. It's going to be significantly deeper, but that's another story and another project couple of things that have been going on this summer that I want to make you guys aware of then I'm going to give you a tour around the pond. Um, my original design for this is to be in full sun. This is full freaking sunlight. There is no shade uh, and it was something I was a little bit concerned about because I was worried about high temperatures. Uh, the pond isn't overly deep but some of the things I'm doing to reduce temps are as follows. I've got a heavy plant load in here. I would like the lilies to have gotten a little bit bigger but it is what it is. But one of the things I've done and I've ran basically all summer is I've run an air stone in here. You can see the air stone right here. That gives me a lot more oxygen. When, I, when uh, temperatures rise, oxygen levels decrease. So I have been concerned about temps in here. It has gotten to about 80 degrees with some of the hot streaks we've been having. The air stone helps. It makes me feel better. The fish seem to like it. The other thing I want to point out, people always come to me and ask us and I got problems with algae in my pond. This lesson can be applied to your aquariums as well. When you're dealing with algae, you want to have a lot of plants that can simply outcompete the algae. I talked about this a couple of weeks back with the aerial advantage. This holds especially true in a garden pond. The more plants you have, the more nitrogen they're removing, and the less ultimate food there is for the algae, and they're going to starve them out. Okay, so I've got a lot of plants growing above the water. Again, Plants that grow above the water have all the full sunlight they can handle and they have all the readily available nutrients from the water they can pull up. So they can grow real hard. Now this was a risk for me because I wanted to run it in full sun, but I knew the full sun would give me tremendous plant growth uh, and pull all that nutrients out of the water. That's why I have such clear water here. I've also got good aeration. I've got a nice big waterfall behind me that's getting it rolling. But it's Sunday. It's Species Sunday. I want to show you guys around some of the plants here. Particularly one of the plants is actually taller than me. We're going to get to that one in a second. I've got some imperial taros behind me. I'm loving these. These will not survive the winter. I'm going to have to pull them in. This is a uh, parrot's feather right here. I recommend this for any pond, even if you're just doing like a little bowl in your backyard. Put some parrot's feather in there. It grows like crazy. This will survive the winter. I've got some cannas here that should survive the winter. I've got some other cannas over there. But I want to show you this plant right here. Actually, before I get to the big boy, I want to show you this. I've got over here, this is Lobelia cardinalis. And then this is some type of a mallow. The Lobelia cardinalis will survive. I'm not sure what this is, but the mallow probably will not. But check this out. This is where it gets fun. This is a red stem thalia. I'm six foot, okay? Look at this plant, all right? This plant is so legit. When I got it, you can see the old clip here. When I got it, it was like this big and had like one little weak thing. All right, so this plant has taken off tremendously. I'm really excited about it. Uh, red stem thalia. This is the first year I've kept it, so I don't have the detailed knowledge, but I can tell you I got here. The problem is it's probably not going to survive the winter. So I'm going to have to take this out of here. Don't worry, we'll be putting another one back. Um, this is one of the umbrella palms. This is the taller variety, and I think I've got the shorter variety down there. This also is not going to survive the winter, but I'm good with that. This plant's not exactly going to make it in the winter. That's okay. The umbrella palm, I'm going to take them down. I'm actually going to bring some of these to the aquatic experience to do an above the rim tank. Some other plants that are not going to survive the winter are the water hyacinth right here, which is invasive in a number of states, and then I've got the water lettuce also. These 
particular plants are your workhorse plants. I have been to Peru. I have seen how the hyacinth grows like crazy tremendously in the Amazon. They grow, they multiply. My man Brandon behind the camera, I hope you can catch this right here. We got this flower going, so I'm absolutely loving them. Another species to show you about, I've got the rush right here. This is a type of rush. This over here is the horsetail rush. Now I will tell you, this is an alteration in the design. My original design was to have all this rush back here come up and make like a big fence. Well, the Talia took off and it is what it is. I love the red stem. I love looking at it from my kitchen. But I originally wanted this to go. This stuff's growing, just not as fast as that. I also want to point out the red mallow. All these are not going to survive the winter. They're going to go into the greenhouse. And then these are some of my personal favorites right here. The taros. Uh, over there I showed you the imperial. This is the black magic taro. And this is the mojito. And this is another type of mallow. For some reason this mallow is not uh, not flowering nearly as well as that one. So here's the problem. Here's the rub. This this pond right here has an oversized fish load in it, okay? There's simply a lot of fish in it. I got a koi problem. Um, you could see the fish in there. There's too many fish in here. What am I gonna do this winter? I'm gonna leave the koi in here. The problem is that in the winter time, I'm not gonna have all of this nitrogen, nitrate removal from the plants working for me, okay? So I gotta not feed the koi in the winter and I'm not gonna have all these plants. So I am concerned that come springtime, I'm not going to have this heavy plant load working for me. So that's something that I am mildly concerned about going into because I'm going to have to remove all of these plants out of here that aren't going to make it in the wintertime and roll like that. And some more species for you. I got, this is the Angie variety from my supplier down in Florida, named after her. Awesome looking, not hardy lily. Sadly, it will not survive the winter, but named after my girl Angie. Love you, Angie. Then we got this little white one here. Not exactly sure what type of nymphaea that is, but that is a hardy lily. That is, I believe, is going to survive the winter. But last and certainly not least, you know I love the cream. You know I love the Wu-Tang. How about Crenum right here? That's right. This is a variety of Crenum growing up out of the top of the water. Thrilled to have some Crenum in the pond. Cream, baby. You know how it is. So that's what's up. And then your boy D just sits right here like this in the morning. Drinks his coffee sitting here, feeds his fish, puts the kids to bed, come out, feed the fish. If I told you how many hours I spent sitting here, you would uh, be disgusted. So that's what's up. Drop me a comment on what you want to know about the plants in this pond. Drop me a comment on what you think of this pond. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe. Make it a fabulous freaking week and tank on. Right! Drinking water.